Hi, you're watching BlackCoffeePoet.com and the Black Coffee Poet YouTube channel. I am Jorge Antonio Vallejos, the Black Coffee Poet. Welcome to year three. Um, and I'm starting off, well I did a video last week, but this is my first vlog as in terms of um, year three, I believe. And um, I'm doing my fall 2012 reading list. You might remember um, my summer 2012 reading list and I listed a whole bunch of books and I got a good response and you know if you're on the YouTube channel now you can just scroll down and find that video easily or just Google um, summer 2012 black coffee poet reading list and you'll find that list. Anyways so it's fall and I am ready to start a new season of reading and writing and enjoying life and I've got a whole bunch of books that's going to be part of that process. So, some books carried over from summer 2012, and uh, they are Jim Harrison's In Search of Small Gods, Skin Like Me by Gary Gottfredson, Runaway Dreams by Richard Wagamese, Horold by Ed Bock Lee, Song I Sing by Bao Fi, My Favorite Warlord by Eugene Gloria, and Hoodlum Birds, also by Eugene Gloria. I'm not going to get into those. You can see the vlog, you know, the Summer 2012 reading list to find out more of those books. But um, as I listed in the article, which is a companion to this vlog, a predecessor to this vlog, it'll be the link will be under this video, um, these books were carried over from that reading list. I didn't read them this summer. And that might happen to the books that I'm going to talk about now. So let's start with poetry. Um, I've got four new books here that I'll be reading uh, this season. Three, or Triple I, by Jay Fisher. Jay Fisher is Canadian, he's from Calgary, and he's very Bukowski-like. Raw, sexy, rude, dirty. And I like it. Tis Pity by David Bateman. Uh, David lives in my city. He's from Toronto. He's a um, out queer writer. Also write, wrote or writes for a publication that I write for as well, uh, which is um, Extra, which is Canada's largest queer publication. And um, yeah, he's a funny guy. He's an interesting guy. He's really involved in the poetry scene. And I've never read any of his books, so I'm excited to read this. And this book will be reviewed. Uh, there'll be an interview with David and also a video of him as Jay Fisher. I already taped Jay Fisher, and um, I just got to read the book and interview him. So those guys are coming up, as is Viewing Tom Thompson, A Minority Report by Kevin Irie. Kevin also lives in Toronto, and uh, I had never even heard of Kevin Irie before. I went to a launch for his book as well as the others, and uh, I found out he's from Toronto, so I'm like, hey, you know, he's a man of color, he's a poet, and he's from my city. I'm going to review this guy, and I'm also going to feature him on blackcoffeepoet.com. Now, Resistance Poetry number two. So, this is part of the International Festival of Poetry of Resistance, um, which is held uh, all over the place, but this is from the Toronto people, and this is from 2012. Um, so, I actually know quite a few people in this book. I'm going to review this as well, interview some of the people, and videotape some of the people again for blackcoffeepoet.com. So, this is fun reading, and also, like, kind of, like, I don't want to use the word business because I don't make any money off Black Coffee Poet, but passion, but you know what I mean. It's for the website and stuff like that. And I'll be reading this October 2012 in Toronto um, at the festival. So check that out. I'll be taping myself and I'll be doing a video around that too. So from poetry, we're going to move on to poetry's cousin, which is the short story. Um, the Shawl by Cynthia Ochik. Um, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that properly, O-Z-I-C-K, very, very well-known um, Jewish-American writer um, who's interesting. Um, she writes a lot about the Holocaust, although she believes that fiction about the Holocaust shouldn't be written. Okay, but that's what she writes about a lot. Uh, it's very small. Um, she's very respected, so I am really interested in reading this book. I'll probably read this in a couple hours. It started out as a short story, and then a novella came out after that short story. So this are, there's the novellas in here as well as the short story. 
The Melting Pot and Other Subversive Stories by Lynn Sharon Schwartz. Um, she is also Jewish American and is very well known. Um, she's been published everywhere. She's also a poet, so I'm interested in reading her poetry after these short stories. Um, but yeah, she talks a lot about different peoples and different, I don't know, walks of life in New York City. I love New York City. Uh, Toronto can be kind of like New York City. Anyway, so I'm interested in this book. I've already started this book, Trash, by Dorothy Allison. Dorothy Allison is well known, uh, or most known, for her book, Bastard Out of Carolina. I haven't read it, but, um, you know, she is self, uh, uh, she self-identifies as uh, sometimes poor white trash. She grew up in really tough surroundings, and she doesn't hold back. Sometimes I'm reading the stories in here, and I'm like, did that really happen? And then I'm like, yeah. That probably really did happen. Anyways, it's uh, it's fiction, but based on reality. And it's rough. Rough, 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 rough stuff. But great stuff. Raw, gritty, entertaining. Pulls you in. You kind of want to step back. Then you come back in. Then you step back. And you come back in. You're like, whoa. But uh, she's got my attention, and I'm really liking trash. One thing for sure, this writing ain't trash. Okay, here we go. Best Lesbian Bondage Erotica. Uh, got this at Goodwill for a buck twenty-five. As some of these books, actually all those three books I just mentioned, the short story, the whole short story collection was bought at Goodwill for a buck twenty-five each on fifty percent off Friday. Yeah. Anyways, um, I'm gonna be reading this book because I love erotica. Now I'm not one of these straight guys who's just like you know crazy about lesbians or anything like that and has a fantasy of being with two women or anything. I just like good writing, um, and I like erotica, and Tristan Terramino, who edited this book, uh, puts together really good books, really good DVDs, really good everything, um, I already reviewed one of her DVDs years ago, um, Cunnilingus 101 gave her the review, and she's like, oh my god, thank you, and she's like, anytime you want to work together, blah, 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 this and that, I'll give you anything you want, and I was like, okay, so anyways, I, I bought this book, but, um, I'm going to be doing something around this book in future, a whole week, uh, and I'm not going to be reviewing the book because I'm not a lesbian, um, but a friend of mine is, and uh, we're going to do some fun stuff with this book and interviewing Tristan and some other stuff, so look out for that. But in the meantime, I'm going to read the book. So we're moving on now to non-fiction. I've got to start off with the book that I'm loving and already reading. Writers and Company by Eleanor Wachtel. So Writers and Company is a radio show uh, on the CBC, which is um, the biggest radio and TV station in Canada, the land where I live, the land now known as Canada. This is originally indigenous land, and then it was colonized. Um, and Eleanor Wachtel has probably the best radio show or journalism show, period, in terms of books and writers. So this is um, a collection of some of her interviews and uh, it's the first book. I think she's got two or three like these. Again, book 25 and it's autographed, which is so cool. Um, I'm reading these things and I'm in awe. Anyway, there's the autograph. If you can see it, I'm not sure. Um, who have I read so far in this book? That I, well, I'm reading it like from beginning to end. I'm not jumping around. I have read an interview with Cynthia Ochik. Hey, what do you know? Cynthia Ochik, writer of this. Amazing interview. Actually, I hadn't bought this book yet, and after reading the interview, I made sure I got this book. And because I had left it at Goodwill and then I went back to get it. Uh, Russell Banks, Spalding Gray, Michael Andachi, who lives in my city, by the way. Now I'm reading an interview with Amos Oz. Anyways, um, whew, just awesome stuff. Okay, here we go, um, running with the buffaloes. So I'm a person with a disability, I've got a limp, um, I can't run for shit. Um, I always say that if a group of guys uh, is trying to attack me, black coffee people ain't running. I just gotta stay and battle it out. So um, because I love running so much, and when I see people run by, I'm just like, I kinda get this, not, I don't get turned on, it's kinda like a, like a high or something, and I'm like, whoa. And in my dreams, I can run. You know what I mean? I usually don't have a limp in my dreams. You know, I can run. I can do whatever I want. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, so the beauty of books is that books take you places. And this book is taking me running with the Buffaloes. The Buffaloes are a cross-country team from the University of Colorado. They were number one in their time. This book was written in, like, the late 90s. And um, 
you know, I just love where books on running can take me because I can't run. I read an amazing, two amazing books this summer. Um, what I talk about when I talk about running by Haruki Murakami and Ultra Marathon Man by Dave, Dave Karanzis, I think is the name. Now I've got another book on running and this is it. So um, yeah, that's the beauty of books. They can take you places that you can't go sometimes. Uh, I love running. I love watching people run. I'd love if I could run, but since I can't, I've got books. Last but not least, the Best American Essays, edited by Guess Who? Cynthia Ochik. There's a theme, theme happening here, and it's not intentional. Uh, I started off with, I think, this book that had Cynthia in it, and then I went and got this book, and then I found that she edited this book, which is pretty cool. Anyways, I write essays. I've had essays published in the Kenyan Review, Winter 2010, Descant, Fall 2010, a book called Crave It, Summer 2011, and now I've got an essay coming out in the Yellow Medicine Review, Fall 2012. So, um, I'm an essay writer, I'm a poet, I'm a journalist, and um, yeah, check out blackcoffeepoet.com and you know continue to look at the videos on the Black Coffee Poet YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us joining me, the Black Coffee Poet, and that's um, that's my reading for this season. Um, you know, maybe not all of them will get read because so many books come into my life that something might get replaced or I might reread and reread something because I might fall in love with it. I am also reading stacks of the New Yorker magazine and I've got other magazines like Harper's lying around and Vanity Fair. So um, maybe not all of it will get read and it might be included in the list and vlog for the winter 2012 and 2013 reading list who knows but uh yeah if you're interested in reading some of the same books i am and want to talk about them by a skype or in person interview in my city um or write me a letter you can do that blackcoffeepoet at gmail.com um and uh you know we can arrange something um if you're interested in any of these books so thank you very much please continue to watch blackcoffeepoet.com and the black coffee poet youtube channel you can subscribe to both for free i'm also black coffee poet on twitter Peace out and keep reading.